Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Jim Schakowsky, owner of LubeCore Minnesota. Uh, perhaps we spoke to you in the past. Today we're working on a quint axle dump truck uh, for a longtime customer. We thought it might be helpful for you out there to see the kind of work that we do and just give a simple explanation, explanation of what is it that we do, how do we ensure that our systems are working, and really what is the advantage to you as an end user. You know, I would say this, I've been doing this for 10 years now. What we find is our, there's more and more equipment out in the field. All of our customers are saying the same thing. It's tough to find drivers. It's tough to find mechanics. Uh, the equipment's getting more expensive. Lead times are longer. Uh, the equipment is being asked to do more. Um, ultimately, the, the decisions to do an auto loop system, is fu it's a function of economics. It's like, how much does this piece of equipment cost? Can we do some things with automatic lubrication to keep the cost of maintenance down and prolong the life of the components and prolong the life of the equipment itself? So that's what really our objective. Uh, today our intention is to show you a little bit about the system. We certainly would like to talk to you about your trucks, your equipment, your applications, and see if there's things that we do here at LubeCore Minnesota that you might find helpful in your operation. What we've got here on this quintaxle dump truck is a pneumatic powered pump. We call it an EP0 because it runs a lighter viscosity grease, but the advantage is it pumps easy in all weather conditions, whether it's 20 below or 80 above, and that's the kind of work that you guys are doing out in the field. We know that the grease has to be able to flow and provide the lubrication that the truck needs. A couple key things about auto lube systems. Uh, you, number one, you'll notice where we mounted this pump. The reason we normally would go on the frame rail in this particular example, based on the clearance, we can keep the pump out of the road grime and the road salt by mounting it up on the deck. Um, the pump itself, you can see this gray, this tan colored material is grease. It's a grease colored. If you look closely, you can see that the reservoir is nice and clear. You can see right through it. It stays clear through its life. It's got a follower plate with a top spring on top of it. The advantage of that is the grease is always under pressure. Some of the enemies of an auto loop system are dirt contamination getting into the system or air getting into the system. The advantage of um, filling through a coupler assembly under pressure means that any air that comes in here migrates out of the pump through, uh, there's a guide tube down in the center that has a slot for air. If air does get introduced into this during the filling process, it's got a way to vent out. The body itself of the pump is aluminum. The timer controller mounts right on the front so you or your mechanics that are, might need to troubleshoot the system or test it can clearly see what's happening from the controller. Additionally, we add things that operators are familiar with, a pressure gauge. So when the system is on pressure, we should expect that we see the pressure come up and then over time that pressure should go down. That tells us that grease has moved through the system to each of the manifolds, which we'll describe later, and partitions the grease out further. Um, the actual mechanism of where does the pump derive pressure is from the secondary air system. We have a solenoid assembly mounted on the bottom, integrated into the timer. The timer opens up, opens a solenoid, and then through a little bit of physics, we're able to amplify your secondary air pressure about 10 times. So if you're running 100 pounds in your secondary, we can get about 1,000 pounds of head pressure here. And so we're able to control and partition how much grease goes to each point as a function of two things, is how often do we run the pump, and then what is the displacement of the manifold, which we'll get to next. So again, this consider this the heart of the system. This is where all the uh, grease stays. This is where the pressure is generated. The balance of the work is done throughout the machine, and we'll get to that next. I'm gonna just jump in and turn the key on here for you real quick just to give you a feel for what kind of controls this have. All right, you'll notice when I turn the key on, the LED is indicating that it's got power. To control the operation of the pump itself, you'll notice there's a little maple leaf. LubeCore is based out of uh, the Toronto, Canada area. Been in business uh, doing work with auto lubrication for 30 years. Uh, there is no external switches on here. All this controls of the auto lube system is a function of a magnet. Any magnet works, but this is a magnetic switch sensor. And if I want to run a cycle, again, this is something we teach you, but we just generate one system stroke. You'll notice the pump comes up on pressure. Grease is coming out of the pump right now, running around the machine to the different manifolds that control how much flow comes out of there. But again, you can clearly see, is the pump running? Yes. Is there pressure generated? Yes. 
those are key things that, you know, in troubleshooting and understanding how auto lube works, you know, this is the basis right here. You need to make sure that you have power and that we have pressure. Again, we talked about the pump and we mentioned to you that when this truck is on and the key is on and the system is working, this pump will generate grease coming out of a main line. This main line will run the length of the frame rail. There's manifolds up in the front catching the front quadrants of the truck. And there's also a variety of points back through the rear here. So what's happening is this main line branches and tees. And this is an example of a metering uh, manifold. And what you'll see on here is there's a wide variety of grease points being lubricated from this single location. The reason we put it here is because we want it equidistant from these drop axles that we're lubricating. But again, we want it visible, we want it protected, and we want it serviceable. Each point has got its own metering injector. You can tell from the look of these that they physically look the same. But if you look at each injector, they've got a laser inscription on them that tells you what its displacement in. And I think of it like this, the bigger the number, the bigger the grease. So many of the components on the truck on these drop axles were catching the top and bottom kingpin, we're catching a slack adjuster and an S-cam. Uh, we do exclude the tie rod ends on the drops. This particular customer has a tendency to do a lot of work off-road. And uh, what we found is historically, if we try to lubricate the tie rod ends on these drop axles, those points can get snagged and tore off. So one of the things we look at and when we work with our customers, we try to get a good understanding of what is your application, how are you gonna be using the truck, and then try to design the system around how you're working. So uh, if you look down here, you'll see that we try to follow the lines based on existing routing. And then once we jump to the terminal points, again, what we're doing here is we're following the brake lines around and Matt's got this nice and secured here. It's very stable. And then what we're gonna do is grease the top kingpin, the S-cam, the slack adjuster, and then one line going back down around to catch the bottom side of the kingpin. So as we know, uh, kingpins need more grease than an S-cam. So again, how we're controlling that flow is really a function of two things. How often does that pump run? And then what is the displacement of the injector? All right, everyone, one of the chief objections we get when we're talking with customers about auto lube systems is integrity. How can we be sure that we can keep the system on and functioning? And you know, uh, our objective and the reason that we want to install with our end users is because we want them to know if there's a problem, we're here to take care of them. On the flip side, we also want to learn and do our best job possible to make sure that it stays on right the first time. So I just wanted to point out today kind of how we run the system and how we route it. Um, and should things pro if should there be problems, I want to assure you we've got parts support and services here to make sure that we keep your system up and running. But if you just want to dive in here real quick, we'll just give you a, an overview of what we're doing here. Um, as I mentioned in, earlier in the clip, there's a main line that follows around the frame rail and provides grease into a manifold. This manifold itself has different metered size injectors, each designed to lubricate one individual point on the truck itself. But you'll notice just from the general overview, we do try to make it accessible, so if you need to service it, it's, everything is right here. And secondly, let's try to follow existing line routing where it resides. Uh, that way, we're trying to ready account for movement that the machine might go through and making sure that we give the system the best chance to stay on. But again, if you follow it down, you can clearly see how we're doing it. How, you'll notice that we do provide some additional uh, protection on the tubing itself by using spiral wrap. We use a lot of zip ties and we're not using the cheap ones, we use the good ones because we want this all to stay nice and tight. Point out, like I said, on the drag link itself. And then on this one, we're catching spring shackles back down in here. You can see how we did that as well. We're very interested in talking with you, hearing what your concerns are about management of your fleet and your lubrication needs to see if we can help you make your life just a little bit easier, keep your equipment on the road longer, and have less problems. Thanks, everyone.